Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going back in history. We're gonna be building up our own civilization. We're gonna be investing and completing in different areas like knowledge or government or military. At the same time, we're gonna be building wonders and grabbing leaders to join our civilization. Today we're looking at the flow of history. It's a civilization building card game for three to five players, takes 60 to 90 minutes to play. Today we're gonna do a rule school. I'm gonna teach you how to set up and play rule for rule, flow of history, so that you don't even have to use the rule book. You could just jump right in. I'm gonna first give you a one minute overview and then I'll teach you the game. Let's get going. The Flow of History is a three to five player civilization building card game where you'll be building your civilization over five different ages. In each age, you'll be picking which attribute you'd like to invest in for your nation. It could be military or construction or knowledge or government and sometimes wonders or leaders. Sometimes opponents will snipe an investment from you by paying you off and taking the card themselves. As you continue to add cards to your nation of the same type, you continually get more and more production icons as well as new effects to be able to be used. Some effects are permanent, some of them are activated immediately, especially like attacking, and some of them are for end game scoring or for specific action triggered events. What will you decide to focus your civilization on? Well, by the end of the fifth age, when the future comes, you'll find out. To set up, first you'll separate out all the cards into their five different ages. You will shuffle each of these decks separately and place them side by side like that. You'll place the future and the internet cards at the end of all these ages. You'll take the internet card and place it over the future card. You'll then take each one of these ages in successive order, starting with age five, and going all the way up to age one and placing those decks right on top. So at the end of this, you have one big draw deck starting with the earliest age one and working all the way down. You'll place that civilization deck that you just built in the middle of the table where everyone can reach it. And next to that, you will place all five age A cards and then you will flip them over. It will look something like this. With three or four players playing, these five cards is all you need to start. If you're playing with the fifth player, you'll take the top card from the age one deck and you'll also place it up here. So there's six cards with five players. Each player will take this double-sided player aid of their color along with a marker of the same color. They'll also take four resource tokens. If you're playing with less than five players, you can remove the player aids and markers of those that aren't playing. The tokens you can set aside as well. Now this spot in front of each player is called their nation. You're also gonna take all of the cards with an S on them that stands for starting cards. You'll shuffle them up and you'll randomly deal each player one of these. They will then flip it face up. All cards that are placed in people's nations are always going to be played face up for the entire of the game. Any starting cards not used for less than five players can be removed from the game. All resource tokens not being used by people's starting nations will all be put together and off to the side. Those are known to be in the reserve and are not able to be taken. Later on during the game, you will be pulling from these to build a supply that everybody will be able to pull from. But for now, these are in the reserve outside of the game. Before I get into the flow of the game, I want to give you some background on the cards. In the game, these cards are called the market, and each of these cards is known as a civilization card. Uh, you have different types. Here is a military type with an icon on the top left. We have construction, knowledge, and I started with one that was a government. There's other cards that are slightly different. These are leaders and these are wonders. We'll talk about how these cards act differently, but let's show you how a turn works. Randomly determine the start player and turns will go clockwise. Each turn has two phases. Each player will go through an action phase and a cleanup phase. In the action phase, there are five possible actions you can take. You're only taking one of these actions, then going to the cleanup phase, then it will be the next player's turn. Now the first action you can choose from is called invest. Now to invest in a card, you simply take some of the resource tokens that you have, at least one, and place it on any card that doesn't already have another player's resource tokens on it. You'll also place your color marker on there too. Now when investing, you can't invest if you've already invested into another card, and you obviously have to have at least one resource token to invest. 
Now after that single action, you'd go through the cleanup phase, which I will cover later in this video, and it would be the next player's turn. But now, instead, I'm going to show you the other possible actions you could have taken on your turn. Now another possible action you can take is complete. Now if you've already invested in a card like this, you can complete the card. The first thing you do is remove your pawn marker, place it in front of you, and then take any resource tokens you've placed here and put them in the supply. It's very important to note that the supply is different from the reserve. The reserve we set up at the beginning of the game, it was all the extra resource tokens not used by one of the players. The supply is different. This is sort of in the middle of the table wherever we can get. These are off to the side, because as we completed that uh, card, this goes into the supply. These will be the ones that will be drawn with further actions later. The next thing you'll do is check to see if you get an investor bonus. There is an icon here and I'll have one of the production icons. You can see here on the left, the different types of icons that are here. So here you see that I actually have an industry icon in this card. Then you count however many of those icons you have in your nation already that you can see. In this case, I have one, this was my starter card. So because I have one, I would get one resource token for every one of these that I had in my nation. Also keep in mind that when completing, you don't have to do it the very next turn after you invest. You would then place this card in your nation face up and you would possibly activate an effect. Uh, you can see here the different effect types. I'm actually gonna go over these a little bit later in the rules in detail, but know that an effect might happen. I'll go over those later. Now, notice that there's no other cards of this color here, so it just got placed here. If you already have a color of that card or a type of card here, of that color and type, you would then place it on top. So let's say I already had the temple, for example, and I got another one of these cards. I would actually cover the other card, but making sure that I don't cover the bottom stripe because this is the production icon. So over the course of the game, as you add cards of the same type, you will continue to gain the production icons, but some of the abilities that some of the cards will be covered up. So you'll only have availability of the ability that's on top for any given type of card. The next possible action you could take is called Snipe. And in this case, you can take a card that somebody else has previously invested in before they completed it and snipe it from them. In this case, I need to be able to pay the investor, who's the red player, as many resource tokens that they had invested. So in this case, I would pay two resource tokens of my own to the red player. I'd need to at least be able to pay him that much to be able to take this action. Then we would take the red marker back, give it to that player, and we would take these two resource tokens and I would move them to the supply, making sure not to mix that with the reserve. Then the investor, who was the one that originally had placed the tokens on that card, will get one resource from the supply for every one of these trade icons that they have in their nation. It could be zero, but for every one of these that they have showing in their nation, they will take a token from the supply, not the reserve. If you're ever taking resource tokens from the supply and there's not enough there, let's say that was the last token, or maybe you were supposed to take more, you can never take the difference from the reserve. You can always only take what's in the supply. If you can't take everything you need, well, then you just take what you can. After taking the amount of resource tokens from the supply for every trade icon in their nation, that original investor on the card gets to take half rounded down of whatever is left in the supply. Now the player that took that snipe action this turn gets to take that card and add it to their nation following all the rules that I mentioned adding a card to your nation in the previous section in the complete action. Also, you need to look and see if the effect on that card needs to be triggered immediately. I will be covering all of these in the effect timing section later. Another possible action is the activate. Now, any card that has this gear icon here will allow you to use this. This would be your whole entire turn. And then you would activate the action on the card. In this example, it says pay three resource tokens to gain one non-invested knowledge card from the market. So let's say this card was free on the market. It's another knowledge card because it has the green book on there. And I would add it to my uh, nation as normal, which is placing it on top of this. And again, some cards have some instant effects. So this one is instantly, I would gain one non-invested military card for the market. I could then place this here, but more in these instant effects later on. The last action you can take is the harvest action. To do this, you count up all of these harvest icons that are in your nation. You then take that many tokens from the reserve and you put them in the supply, in this case, three. 
Then you take half of the amount of tokens that are in the supply, round it down, and you add them to your nation. Also, at this point, if you have less total tokens in your nation than the age we're in, this is the top of that civilization deck, you would get up to that many. So I had just taken two, that was all I had. I get to add a third one because you can always have as many as the nation that we're currently in the game when you take this harvest action. Now the cards I haven't talked about yet are the Leaders and the Wonders. The Leaders are always these yellow cards, and they have different timed effects that we'll go over later. In this case, this is one that you could just activate during the Activate action, and you can do certain things with these Leaders. Follow all the rules specifically that are on each of those cards. Now if you want to get another Leader, you can only have one. So let's say later I get this Age 5 Leader. I will then have to discard this out of the game to replace it with this Leader. Now, Wonders are gotten from the market the same way other cards are, but they are pretty much always end-game scoring effects. It tells you on the card how to score them. In this case, you'd gain one culture icon for each construction card you have. Now, if you get another Wonder, you can still place it next to the other one. You don't stack these and they don't discard. You can just add Wonders to your nation. And this icon brings us to the next section, which is these different types of effects. Earlier I mentioned when adding cards to your nation, there may be an effect timed right then. On the left you can see the different types of effects. The first three on the left, Instant, Attack, and Attack All, all happen immediately after you add the card to your nation. In this case, I have an Instant Effect. So I would have added this card to my nation, and since the Instant Effect happens after, I also have all these production icons, including the card that I just added. So this Instant Effect says take one re uh, resource token from the reserve to your nation for each harvest icon you have. So I actually get to take three resource tokens because I count the ones that are on that card as well, and that's how instant actions work. Now keep in mind all these instant effects happen immediately and that's it, only one time per game. The next immediate effect is this attack icon. Now once this card is added to your nation, you then add up how many attack icons you have in your nation. This is four. You then look at the players that have less attack and defense icons combined. In this case they have one attack and one defense, that's two. I have more than them, so I can play this attack on the one person that I choose that's less than me. If people are tied, I can choose which one to do this to as long as they have a less total number of defense and attack than I have attack. In this case, it says choose and discard the top knowledge or construction card from an opponent with less military strength. So you could choose to remove one of those from them. This brings us to one of the other type of effects, which is permanent. Now, this wasn't one of the three that I mentioned uh, earlier that are instant, but in a sense it is instant because as soon as you add this, this is a permanent effect for the end of the game. The next one is an attack all, very similar to the attack. And again, after you add it, you immediately attack all with all of these. So now I have three, four, five, six, seven attack, and I could go, now I attack every player that has less than a combined seven of attack and defense, and I get to choose, in this case, and discard the top knowledge uh, or uh, construction cards of all players. So this is sort of the same type of card, but instead of just attacking one player, I can attack all players who have less attack and defense uh, than I have attack. And we've already talked about the turn action effect, essentially the ones with the gears allow you to, for your action, do whatever that card says. And the one with this icon is the scoring effect. This happens only at the end of the game. For example, gain one culture icon for each trade icon you have. And this one might be from a wonder that says gain four culture icons. There's also some cards that have this icon that looks like the end game scoring icon, but it's a little bit different, it has a line through it. And this will basically not be activated during scoring. It will tell you that in the text. This is normally a permanent action, but it says deactivated during scoring. Now those are all the possible actions you can do on your turn. Keeping in mind you're only doing one of those, then you're moving to this cleanup phase. The first thing you do in this phase is you will refill any open slots in the market from this civilization deck. Next what you'll do is you'll look at all the cards and see if any of them are two ages earlier than the current age. Right now we're in age three. This card is in age one. Now if there was a player that had invested in this already, you would do nothing and you would move on. However, this card was not invested because it's two ages earlier than the current age, it would get discarded out of the game and replaced by this deck. Then we would check to see if the game would end, otherwise we would move to the next player. 
And the game ends as soon as the future card, which remember the future and the internet card were the bottom two cards in the civilization deck. When this card either enters the market or is gained directly by a player after that player's turn, it ends. Uh, you can gain this before it enters, you know, some cards that allow you to get the, the top card in the deck, for example. And then first, everyone looks to see if they have any of these end game deactivation icons. And essentially, like in this case, the trade icon would no longer give you a defense icon. Everyone would deactivate all those on their cards in front of their nation. Then everybody would add up all of the culture icons that they have stacked up. They come from different cards, you know, in this case, like a government building, sometimes from leaders, sometimes from abilities, and all those get added up. And then all of these other production icons, every two of them is worth one point. Then activate all the end game scoring icons on all the cards that you have. The person who has the most points at this point is the winner. In case of a tie, the player with the most amount of cards in their nation is the winner. If it's still a tie, the player with the most resource tokens is the winner. Well, I hope you enjoyed that rule school of flow of history that allowed you to dive right into the game uh, without having to open up and read that rule book. If you have further questions, go ahead and leave them in comments in this video and we will do our best to answer them.